Hi guys! Welcome back to my channel. My name is Shayna. And today's video is going to be a sort of get to know me through the fragrances that I love. Um, I don't know if I've ever seen a video like this before, but if there is something like that, um, cool. <laughs> I, I'm not trying to be original. I just, um, I thought it'd be a fun video so that you guys can sort of get to know me and then at the same time get to know what fragrances I love. And uh, if you're not already familiar with my channel, I do a lot of skincare uh, videos, but I'm also extremely um, passionate about fragrance. Um, I recently put out a video on the Lilabo um, City Exclusives and we just ended the month of September so unfortunately you can't buy any of the City Exclusives um, anymore unless you live in that city you can buy you know the one that your city is but um yeah so for the month of September everybody gets a chance to buy any of the City Exclusives so I did a video on that so um, today I'm going to be introducing you guys to some of my favorite fragrances not all of them but just a bunch of my favorites um, I'm gonna go through the notes with you, but I'll try to go through them more quickly just so that we can get through because there's quite a few of them. And um, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoy the video and let's just get started. Okay, so the first uh, fragrance I picked up, and this is in no particular order. This is um, Chanel Allure and this is the Eau de Parfum. I have the Eau de Toilette, which is actually from it, it is from the 90s. It's it, it was my mom's and so this one does hold sort of like a special place in my heart because it is one that my mom used to wear all the time when I was growing up, the Eau de Toilette version. I like both versions. I don't want to use hers up so I've been using up, well I've been using the Eau de Parfum that I have and um, let's just go through some of the notes first. Okay, so Allure is described as um, a citrus floral, with vanilla, white florals, it's fruity, woody, sweet, powdery, rose, and aromatic. And um, Chanel describes Allure as difficult to define, impossible to resist, clean and sheer, warm and sexy. Allure is a floral, fresh, amber fragrance that finds an expression unique to each woman. Sparkling notes of mandarin combined with the softness of May Rose and the sensuality of vanilla. So here's the bottle. It's very pretty um, So it shows notes of peach in the top vanilla mandarin orange jasmine Bergamot magnolia cedar vetiver orange blossom Rose peony and lotus. So actually it doesn't really show them in any specific order and I use Fragrantica for all of like my uh, fragrance questions and if I want to know anything about a fragrance I just always go to Fragrantica.com. This is a vanilla fragrance in my opinion except it's not uh, your typical sort of gourmand type of vanilla. It's a much more softer sort of floral vanilla so let's just spray this and just so you guys know quite a few of these are going to be Chanel. Um, that's just what I like. <laughs> so let's spray this over here. Okay, so, oh, you guys, this is just such a, if you like vanilla, but done in an extremely um, non-gourmand way, then you need to try Allure. But oh, it just, you can just smell, it's like, it's so refined, it's so sophisticated. And you guys, this lasts a long time on my skin. Like, I spray, I only need a couple of sprays. I mean, you can overspray this, but you're going to be projecting. Like, this fragrance projects. And so right off the top, I smell, I do smell that peach, but it's not, it's not like a very, it's not like a super peachy peach. It's like very... Um, it's not fruity. I wouldn't say this smells fruity. Oh, it is just such an amazing fragrance, you guys. Um, so if you guys, like I said, like vanilla, but you don't want a gourmand vanilla, you want something more sophisticated, more high class, less sort of vanilla that you would kind of eat, and more of just like a vanilla fragrance mixed with some beautiful 
um, florals. You've got the rose in there at the bottom, peony, lotus, um, and some of my favorite base notes, cedar and vetiver. You would really, really enjoy this fragrance. So I highly, highly recommend Allure. And so, yes, Allure, one of my favorite Chanel fragrances of all time. Okay, so the next fragrance I picked up is actually an older fragrance. I think this one is from... I think this one is from like the early 2000s, maybe mid 2000s. Um, it's actually Lancome's Hypnos. Um, I think if you guys, a lot of you guys are sort of in my age group, you would remember this one. Um, and uh, this is what it looks like. It says Hypnos right there at the top. And it just it comes in this pretty twisted glass bottle with, you know, the purple liquid inside. And you guys, oh. Oh, this is such a good fragrance, you guys. Ugh. Okay, so let's go through the notes. Um, this is a sunny, woodsy oriental. I don't know if I would consider an oriental, but that's what they say with gourmand nuances. This fragrance features passion flower, which creates both a gentle and passionate feminine aura. The magical product of orchid vanilla smells warm and creamy on the skin, that for sure and vetiver surrounded with white flowers and jasmine sam sambach gives a sensual and deep sensation so some of the notes in this the top note is passion flower the middle notes are jasmine and gardenia and the base notes are vanilla and vetiver so let's give this one a sniff you guys this is just a fragrance that takes me back to high school just but it's still it's not it's not like childish at all <sighs> okay, so I'm guessing that top note I'm smelling is the passion flower. It's so unique. It's just, it's such a unique fragrance. And it just, to me, when I wear this, I feel like I'm not going to smell like anybody else, like, that I come in contact with throughout the day. This is just such a unique fragrance. Again, it has that slight vanilla, but it's, again, it's not... It's not that gourmand vanilla. Okay, so they described it as like an oriental fragrance with gourmand nuances. I don't really think of this as a gourmand. I mean, it has... Yeah, so the, the, the top notes are kind of fruity with that passion flower, but it just smells so creamy on the skin. Creamy in like the best way possible. So... I just think if you guys want to smell really unique, I I have not smelled Hypnos on anyone in years. Um, like I said, this, you know, I used to wear this in high school and to me it still smells very original. It doesn't smell childish at all. Um, it's a very, very just unique fragrance. And like the name says Hypnos, it kind of does have this sort of hypnotic um quality to it. It's just really interesting. I think if you guys want an interesting fragrance, um, I would definitely give this one a sniff. I don't know if they actually still sell this at the Lancome counters, um, but you can, this one is not, this one is not a hard to find fragrance. Um, so yeah, that is a Lancome Hypnos. Okay, so the next fragrance I picked up, this is actually a newer fragrance to me. I haven't used that much of it. This is Sisley's Itzia. And, um, you know, I never had, I've never tried any of the Sisley fragrances. This is the first one that I've ever tried. But you guys, this is, smells insanely good. So, um, just insanely good. It's a rose fragrance, but it doesn't, to me, it just really doesn't scream rose. I don't know if anybody else has tried this, but I just don't, it's just not a typical rose fragrance. So, um, the main accords are rose, floral, musky, citrus, powdery, fresh, amber, aldehydic, fresh, spicy, and woody. Um, I just, it's one of the most, I don't know, just unique rose fragrances. Um, so it says, this is described as a modern, new, and multifunctional perfume with focus on the no note of rose. The composition begins with aldehydes, white bergamot, and pink pepper. A rose accord in the sophisticated heart of the perfume is enriched with transparent floral notes and angelica. Amber, musk, and cedar form the warm, woody, musky base of the fragrance. So um, it has top notes of white bergamot, aldehydes, pink pepper, 
Middle notes of Rose, Angelica, Floral notes, Peony, Lily of the Valley, Jasmine, and base notes are Musk, Cedar, and Amber. And the bottle is really pretty, you guys. Like, it's kind of pink. I don't know if you could tell the glass at the bottom is like pink and then it's kind of orange, but... Oh my God, this smells so good. And I forgot to mention, um, Allure is an any time of the year fragrance. I don't know if I would necessarily say it's a summer fragrance, but it, it could be a signature scent. Hypnos, any time of the year. Not necessarily, again, a summer fragrance. I think of summer fragrances as just like extremely fresh, lots of brightness and citrus. So um, this to me is more of like a spring summer fragrance, I guess. So let's spray this one. Oh, you guys. Just, you need to smell this. It's just so bright. Like, it's so bright and... Like, you get the rose, but it's like it's like a, a fresh-cut rose. It's not... It's not that typical rose that you're used to smelling. It's, it's like a fresh... It's just the freshest rose, like fresh rose petals. This, to me, is extremely unique. Again, I haven't smelled this on anybody. It's so f fresh and vibrant. The florals, it's not too floral. Like I don't particularly enjoy heavy floral fragrances, especially like gardenia and tuberose. Like they have to be done well. Um, I love rose though. This is just one of the best fragrances in my opinion. Rose is the main accord I would say for sure, but it's, like I said, it's not your typical rose. This just smells like spring in the best way possible. If you want to just smell unique and like, like I was saying, like the Hypnos is another unique fragrance. This one is also extremely unique. It just smells so good. Yeah, you guys need to try this one. So yeah, again, this is Sicily Itzia. All right, guys, going back to Chanel for a little bit. So this is Chanel number no. five low. So this is the one that came out, I don't know, let's see. This came, this came out in 20, I want to say this came out in 2017. It might've come came out in 2016, but I know it came out very, very close to when my husband and I got married. So this is actually the fragrance that I wore on our wedding day. So this one holds an extremely special place to me. Um, yeah, and there's a little bit of sort of symbolism behind why I chose this. So, uh, low in French, I believe, means water. And number five has significance to me in a numerology sense, um, just about our wedding day and everything. So, um, and then we also got married on the water. So that's another reason why I picked this fragrance. Um, because yeah, water and we got married on the water and number five means something to me. So, oh, you guys. Uh, when I smell this, if you guys are like afraid of Chanel number no. five, which I, I I would never wear that fragrance, not because I just, it's not, it's just not my cup of tea, but this is so different from, from Chanel number no. five, I think. So let's spray this one. It's so light. Oh, it's so light. It's so good. Um, this is what the bottle looks like. It's so pretty. Um, okay, so let's go into it. Okay, so if you are someone that likes aldehydes, then you would definitely like Chanel number no. five. You would definitely like Chanel number no. five low. Um, uh, this is described as a citrus aldehydic fresh woody yellow floral, sweet, powdery, and white floral fragrance. Um, okay, so this is the latest fragrance in the Chanel number no. five. Um, it says it's a flanker that aims to capture the younger millennial audience, which I definitely agree with. Um, <clears throat> the scent was developed by Olivier Polge as a light and fresh, fresh interpretation of the sophisticated original Featuring prominent notes of May Rose from Gross. All right, so the notes. It says top notes are aldehydes, lemon, neroli, mandarin, orange, orange, bergamot, and lime. 
Middle notes, ylang ylang, jasmine, and may rose, and base notes of white musk, orris root, cedar, and vanilla. So definitely off the top, you get those aldehydes, just straight aldehydes, which if you're not a fan of aldehydes at all, then you probably won't enjoy this. Oh, but the citrus is there too. And then I love ylang ylang, jasmine, and rose. So those are the heart notes. And then the base notes, white musk, orris root, cedar, vanilla. I don't get too much of the vanilla, although the vanilla does give it sort of like a creaminess. Yeah, it definitely gives it a creaminess. And the, then the musk too, it just softens it. It's such a good fragrance. Um, yeah, so like I was saying, this fragrance is special to me because I wore it on my wedding day and I pretty much doused myself in this because it, it is, it's a pretty light fragrance. It's not, it doesn't project. It's more of a skin fragrance, I think. And it is, um, as far as, um, you know, uh, it's longevity, it's not super long lasting. It is an eau de toilette. So, you know, it's not going to be extremely long wearing, but um, definitely one to try if you're someone that wants to get into aldehydes. Um, this is sort of a good entryway into it. It's not super aldehyde heavy. Um, and if you're not a fan of Chanel number no. five, then I would definitely try this one. So, yep, this is Chanel number no. five low. Okay, so the next fragrance I have for you guys is Narciso Rodriguez for her. This is kind of one of those very popular fragrances. Um, it's just, in my opinion, if you love musk, this is a must have. <laughs> um, so this is described as musky, powdery, white floral, citrus floral, fruity, woody, animalic, amber, and aromatic. And um, if you don't know, this is actually one of the fragrances that uh, Francis Kirkchian worked on. So if you're a fan of Maison Francis Kirkchian, you might enjoy this one. Um, so this was launched in 2003. It says, um, unusual lustful composition is created with a sensual musk in its center, surrounded by orange, osmanthus, and amber. The base unites vanilla, amber, and vetiver. Intensive, sharp scent with hidden and scarcely discernible, densely sweet nuance in the center, later turns into a soft and balmy powder. The trace has become more mysterious and rich thanks to exotic woods, patchouli, and sandalwood. So if you're someone that enjoys musk, you definitely, definitely need to try this one. So the top notes are African orange flower, osmanthus, and bergamot. Middle notes are musk, amber, and base notes are vetiver, vanilla, and patchouli. Um, yeah, you guys, this is just a musk bomb. I love this stuff so much. I, I've worn a lot of this. How much do I have left? I don't even know. Ah. Oh. There's just nothing like this. Ugh, just one of the best. Okay, so. I mean, I can't tell you if I for sure smell African orange flower, but oh, off the top, it is, it is, it's so nice. But you guys, this fragrance, I mean, I would say it, it stays pretty much the same throughout like the life of wearing it. It doesn't change too much, but the, but after like you wear this for a little bit, it just, it is such a beautiful musk. It's just, it, if you are someone who enjoys musk, you need to have this in your collection. It is such a beautiful and it, it, it to me, it lasts pretty long. I I prefer the black bottle, which I think is the Eau de Toilette. Yeah, so I, I like the Eau de Toilette more than the Eau de Parfum, which I think comes in the pink bottle. Um, this one, to me, just I, I like this one a lot better. The composition on the Toilette versus the Parfum are a little bit different. Um, I specifically love the one in the black bottle. Um, I just think it is just such a fabulous... Oh, it's so good. Um, just an amazing musk fragrance. And if you are someone who enjoys musk, you 100% need to try. At least get a sample because you will not be disappointed. 
Such a good one. Okay, so the next fragrance I have for you guys is the Chance the Ovive interpretation or flanker. Um, I was never a huge fan of the Chanel, just the regular Chance. It was like a little bit too popular for me. I smelled it all the time. Like family members I know loved it and friends, like close family friends and stuff. So it was just, I liked it, but I didn't love it. And so when this one came out, um, I was actually pleasantly surprised because I had smelled, you know, the other two and they were fine. I thought they were good, but they weren't anything special to me. I don't know. I've heard a lot of people say they don't like this one, but I love this one. I don't know why people say that this, that this is not their favorite one. This is my favorite one. So this is described as citrus, woody, white, floral, fresh, spicy, aromatic, and powdery. Um, and let's see when this one came out. When this one came out in 2015, um, the nose behind this is Olivier Polge. And um, so it says that uh, Chanel Chance Au Vive uh, is signed by perfumer Olivier Polge, who blends sparkly notes of grapefruit with juicy, explosive red orange, providing citrus splash to elegant jasmine and white musk. Uh, base notes of the composition mix vetiver, cedar, and iris, leaving a fresh, gentle, elegant, and subtle trail. So yes, top notes of blood orange, which is one of the reasons why I love this, and grapefruit, just, just such good citruses in the top. So blood orange, grapefruit, and citruses. In the middle, we've got jasmine and white musk, and in the base, vetiver, cedar, and iris. So that sounds like it's something up your alley. Definitely give this one a sniff. Oh my god, I love this one. Okay, so I don't know if I mentioned, yeah, I keep forgetting to mention Narciso Rodriguez for her. This one is definitely more of a, I mean, I guess you could wear it all year round. I don't see a problem with that. But to me, it's not necessarily, again, it's not a summer fragrance. Like, you know, because it's so musky. But let's see, Ovive. Okay, 100% this is summer. Spring, summer in a bottle. You got the citruses, the grapefruit, the bitter orange at the top, or sorry, the blood orange at the top. Oh, you guys, if you were like me and you weren't a super fan of Chanel Chance or any of the flankers, like the Otondra and the Ofrosh Fresh, I think, give Oviva a try. You won't be disappointed. To me, this is the best. This is the best out of all, what is it, four of them? This is for sure the best. I just love how it's so bright and citrusy at the top, but it's not lemony. And I love grapefruit. I love grapefruit in the top. It's just, it is so well done. It's just so well done. I wouldn't say that it's necessarily like the longest lasting. I don't think any of the Chanel flankers were that long lasting. I think Chanel Chance, probably the Eau de Parfum was long lasting because that one projected. I could definitely smell that on people. This one is probably not super strong in projection, but I mean, it's a, it's a citrusy fragrance. It's, it's summery, so oh, it's so good. It's so fresh and vibrant. It's got that musk in there, so. This is a really good one, you guys. Definitely, definitely need to check out Ovive. If you are someone who enjoys bright citrus fragrances and you were looking for something for the spring or summer, this is definitely a great one to try. So yeah, Chanel Chance Ovive. And the next one I have for you guys is My Burberry. Burberry, My Burberry. And this is another Francis Kirchian um, concoction masterpiece. <laughs> um, I have these tiny little bottle because this was actually a blind buy, um, but I ended up loving it. So I'm glad that I bought it. And um, this, this is actually, I would say one of my most complex and just, I, I would say this could even fall into like a niche category. This one to me is so interesting and super unique and it really paints a picture in my mind when I wear this of what this fragrance was trying to encompass. Um, so this one is described as floral, sweet, citrus, rose, fruity, fresh, spicy, aromatic, and green. 
Um, like I said, this was a blind buy and I just kind of went off the notes and um, yeah, I, I love Francis Kirchner. So anything that he has come out with, I've, I've almost always loved. So this was launched in 2014. Um, the way that this is described, I think is just absolutely exactly how I pictured it even before I read what this was supposed to be, why this fragrance was created for Burberry. Okay, so Francis Kirchian was actually, um, he said that he was inspired by London, an urban garden. You have the vibrancy of the city, so it is something contemporary. You have the garden, you have the flowers and the art of gardening, which is very important for the British. Um, the flowery aspect of the perfume comes from that idea of the garden after the rain and you guys, I, when I smell this fragrance, that is exactly, exactly what I smell. I picture myself being in a garden in, in London, in the middle of the city, wearing a Burberry trench coat and having this on. Um, this to me is definitely a fall fragrance. I wouldn't wear this in the summer or the spring. I mean... Yeah, no, I, I wouldn't wear it in the spring. This is just, uh, let me just go through the notes with you guys. So top notes of sweet pea, bergamot, mandarin orange, grapefruit, and lemon. Middle notes of quince, freesia, geranium, peach, green notes, gardenia, pan and passion fruit. And the bottom, we've got damask rose, rose, patchouli, musk, leather, and violet. Um, you guys, if any of those notes sound like something you'd be interested in, you need to have this in your collection. It is so... Ugh, I wore this yesterday. Even though it was 90 degrees, I just... I want to be in the fall spirit. Like, I don't... I... It keep... The weather here is so, um... Just unpredictable. Like, we're in October, and today it's like 95 degrees. So... I'm, I'm just like ready. When, when is fall gonna come? Like I want to be wearing sweatshirts, not, you know, tank tops. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Let's spray this one. And this, you guys, I mean, in my opinion, this is pretty beastly. Like this is, this is like almost beast mode in terms of like projection. Like I, my husband yesterday when I wore this, I sprayed this once on my, you know, neck area once not on both wrists, just once on one wrist. And I just j dabbed it like that and that was it. And my husband was like, babe, you sprayed a lot of perfume. And I was like, no, I didn't. I sprayed two sprays. He's like, well, it's a lot of perfume. So, so this one is extremely strong. Not strong to the point where like, you know, when you smell it, you're gonna get a headache or s uh, start sneezing, but <sighs> This is so good. Okay, so to me, I just picture myself, I get a lot of the geranium. A lot of people say they get quince. I don't really know what quince smells like, so maybe they're, you know, the, it is heavy on the quince, but I smell a lot of the geranium. To me, I picture, like I said, standing in a garden in the middle of London, wearing a trench coat after it has just rained. And that is exactly how I picture myself when I wear this. Like, it smells exactly like that. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in, you need to pick this up. Or just smell it at least. Get a sample. This is just one of... I would say this is definitely my most long-lasting perfume that I have. This lasts definitely more than eight hours on the skin. It is such a good fragrance, you guys. It is... I... It is so good. It's just so good. Exactly how it was described is exactly how it smells. Just phenomenal. This is honestly, this is like a masterpiece in my opinion. This is something extremely unique. And it, it just, if you, if you want like a fall fragrance, but not like a, not like a gourmand fall fragrance or, you know, something with spice in it, because this doesn't have any spices in it. This, this is something that you need to try. Like, I'm not super heavy on the spicy fragrances, as you can tell. <laughs> um, almost none of these fragrances so far have spice in it. I'm not a huge oriental type fragrance wearer, but I mean, at least not for these sort of main, more mainstream, like if we're getting into niche fragrances, I would say I could handle some spice, but not heavy, heavy spice. So, Again, you guys, this is such an amazing fragrance. Just 
at least give it a sniff if you're looking for a fall fragrance but you're not looking for one that's um, like I said a gourmand or has any spice in it this one is a must try my Burberry okay we're gonna br we're bringing it back a little bit so th this is uh, Gucci Rush 2 this is my probably third bottle since it doesn't as you can see there's not that much in it I mean it's a pretty thin uh, container <laughs> um, what is this this is a one one fluid ounce um, this you guys well let's see this is bringing it back to 2001 so 20 years ago this fragrance came out and I don't know when I first smelled it I think it was probably 2003 four maybe somewhere around there high school uh, when I first smelled this on one of my best friends, I immediately was like, I need that in my life. And back then I had probably like two, maybe three fragrances at the most. And they were very like your typical, um, you know, fragrances from high school that you remember like Polo and Clinique Happy or Tommy Girl, like those kinds of fragrances. And... When I smelled this, I, it was just instantly, I fell in love. Instantly. Um, so, let's see. It says, uh, after the success of Gucci Rush, the Italian fashion brand presents Gucci Rush 2. So, yeah, if you don't know what Gucci Rush is, Gucci Rush came in the um, red container. So, uh, they're very different in my opinion. I much prefer two. I like one. I definitely, or just the regular Gucci Rush, I do like but to me, too, is like my jam. Um, it says the structure of the scent does not follow the classic three level tr or sorry, tree level pyramid, but it is horizontal. We, so we can smell the whole floral composition at once. This fresh and flowery fragrance opens with rose, freesia and musk. Woodsy accords with green notes of palm, oak moss, narcissus create the sensual trail. So um, interesting. I didn't actually know that about the like the horizontal level of this per perfume. It's described as a white floral, floral, green, fruity, fresh, musky, yellow floral, soft, spicy, mossy, and rose. Um, we've got, like they were saying, top, middle, base. It, um, they do show it on here as top, middle, and base, so let's just go through it. Um, it's got top notes of freesia, lily of the valley, and rose, middle notes of narcissus, palm tree, lily, and gardenia, and base notes of black currant, musk, and oak moss. Oh my god, you guys. If you like any of those, like, especially like musky oak moss, sort of, I don't say this is necessarily a chypre, or I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, um, C-H-Y-P-R-E. Uh, but this is one of, this is a masterpiece. This is a, a masterpiece. Um, so let's give it a spritz. I don't even want to waste this stuff, you guys. This one is not hard to find, um, compared to one other one that I'm going to show you, but. 100% spring and summer. I mean, you could really wear this at all times of the year. Oh, I don't want to spray it again. It's so good. It is just such an amazing fragrance, you guys. It's so unique. It's so fresh, but it's not like... It's, it doesn't have citrus in it. It's, it's fresh, but no citrus. Okay, so when I smell this, I just get like watery. Like there's no aquatic notes in it. But to me, I just get like this watery palm, like it has palm tree in it. And I get this sort of like aquatic wateriness. I don't know what it is, but it is so good and so fresh and aquatic smelling to me. Maybe it's the narcissus and the palm tree. I don't get a lot of black currant. I don't know, maybe, let's see what other people say. Other people are saying they get a lot of the black currant. On me, it doesn't come up that way, though. Like, when I wear this on my skin, to me, I just get such a nice, fresh, like, watery, like, watery flowers and 
and it's not the same as the My Birdery. Like that one to me is not the same. I get like watery plants or something. Oh, this is such a special one, you guys. Gucci Rush 2. If you can get your hands on this, this is kind of like one of my like secret fragrances that, that like I, cause I don't smell this on anybody anymore. So when I wear this, I'm like, I feel like, oh, okay. Like I'm going to smell unique today, you know? And it's not heavy in the projection sense. Like, like this one definitely sits closer to the skin. And if like someone were to be near you and they smelled this, they'd be like, wow, what is, what is that? It smells amazing. It smells so fresh. It is such a good, it is an amazing fragrance, amazing. And it has gardenia in it, but like, I don't smell the gardenia at all. Cause I'm not a huge gardenia fan. Like if there's a, if there's a fragrance that's heavy on gardenia or tuberose, I'm like, eh, it has to be done well, you know? Cause they can be very, very intense. Um, this to me, I don't get any gardenia. So I don't know. To me, this is just such an amazingly fresh, like wet plants. It's just so good. It is such a good fragrance. You guys must try this. If you can get your hands on it, must try. All right, the next one I picked up is um, Chanel number 22. This is Le Exclusive de Chanel. So this is um, sort of like in their exclusive line in these taller bottles. Um, so Chanel number 22, I was, it was either gonna be this one or the Chanel number five that I wore on my wedding, Chanel number five low. And so both of these remind me of my wedding time of the year um, because it was, you know, I had to choose between this one or that one. And I ended up going with low, as I mentioned, number five. Um, but I tested this one in the middle of summer on a humid day. And that is when I fell in love with this fragrance. I don't know what it is about this. And okay, so first of all, this is very aldehydic, very aldehydic. So if you do not like aldehydes, you will not like this at all. Aldehydes are something that you kind of have to either, you either like it or you don't like it. And I mean, I guess you could learn to like it, but um, I, I guess I didn't used to like them. And then out of nowhere one day, I, I guess I decided I liked them. I don't know. But uh, this is described as a white floral, aldehydic, fresh, yellow floral, wood, woody, rose, floral, soapy, sweet, and vanilla. Definitely soapy. Um, so <laughs> uh, this came out in 1922, hence the Chanel number 22. Let's see. It says this was created for Mademoiselle Chanel. This perfume is named after the year of its birth, 1922. Chanel expressed her affection towards simplicity, clarity, and modernity. Number two, 22 is intensive, powdery, floral, fragrance, refined, sweet, and feminine. Um, so this is a very old sort of, yeah. So <laughs> this is a fragrance that you cannot go heavy on. You need to spray this and walk into it or spray it like far away from yourself. You don't want to be dousing yourself in this because then someone might get like a little bit, they might get a headache just in the sense that like if they're not into those sort of soapy aldehydic scents. Um, so top notes of aldehydes, neroli, lily of the valley, middle notes of ylang ylang, jasmine, rose, tuberose, and the base notes of vanilla and vetiver. So. Yes, let's give this one a sniff. I mean, it's straight up, it's straight up aldehydes. If you are someone who loves aldehydes, you definitely need to give this one a try. But you don't really like Chanel number no. five, like I don't, you will like this. It smells like soap in the best way possible. Um, it, it just smells so like it just smells like soap. Like if you want to smell like soap, you need this. <laughs> um, it just, it smells like when you when you just start lathering up some soap when you're washing your hands, that is what this smells like. And it, it like, it, okay, so like I was saying, I wore this on a hot, humid day. That is when I fell in love with it. Um, I don't, as you can see, I've not used very much. I don't pull this one out very often. I have to be in the mood for this one. This one, I 
uh, to, in my opinion, should be worn more on sort of a humid day. And I guess time of year doesn't really matter, but I wouldn't say this is necessarily like a wintry kind of fragrance, no. Like this is, this is more of a daytime, you wanna smell fresh and soapy, and it's a little bit humid outside, it's a little bit hot, not like sweltering, but you know, like m moderately hot. Um, and you just wanna smell like you got out of the shower and you, you know, wash yourself with like the most soapiest smelling soap, nothing fruity about it, just straight aldehyde soap. This is a fragrance for you. But like I said, it is extremely strong, so you need to go like pretty light with it. Um, longevity wise, I wouldn't say this is super long lasting, but it's not, um, it's not like it's super weak either. So if you like aldehydes, must try this. Oh, it's such a good one, you guys, such a good one. So yeah, Chanel number 22. Okay, and again, another Chanel fragrance for you guys, as, as uh, I told you in the beginning, I do like Chanel fragrances. So um, this one you can see I've used quite a bit of. This one has a very special place in my heart, Chanel Gabrielle. This one came out in 2017, I believe. Let's see, yes, so this was launched in 2017. That is the year that I got married. This is the fragrance I wore on my entire honeymoon. So it was it was Chanel number no. 5 on my wedding day and then we did the very traditional thing where we went on our honeymoon right as soon as our wedding was done. It was like we flew out the next day. Um so these two are like super super special to me. Um whenever I wear this fragrance, I am instantly transported to Tulum where which is where we uh, honeymoon to Lou Mexico and well we went all around Mexico but the majority of the time was spent in um, Quintana Roo, uh, Tulum, Cancun, that whole area, that whole region, a little bit of the time we were in Mexico City but um, this fragrance just transports me back to my honeymoon and that is why um, I don't wear it all the time because it's sort of more of like a special fragrance to me and I like it just, I don't want to ruin that memory, so that's why I don't wear it all the time, but I, I've used quite a bit because I used it like every day on my honeymoon, and it was the perfect fragrance to wear on my honeymoon. It was just perfect. Um, let's go through what this notice is, uh, the, what this fragrance is described as. So it's described as a white floral, citrus, woody, sweet, fruity, yellow floral, musky, powdery, tuberose, and animalic. Like I said, it was launched in 2017. Again, the nose behind this was Olivier Polge. So it says that Olivier Polge crafted this eau de parfum as an imaginary flower, a radiant and sparkling, purely feminine Chanel blossom based on a bouquet of four white flowers. The top notes of this fragrance, Chanel Gabrielle, are grapefruit, again, one of my favorites, mandarin orange and black currant. Middle notes of orange blossom, jasmine, ylang ylang, tuberose, lily of the valley, pear, and pink pepper. Base notes of musk, sandalwood, cashmere, and orris. Oh, you guys. One of the best Chanel fragrances. And I'm just, I, I'm so glad that I picked this for my honeymoon. Um, I actually think my sister got this for me for our honeymoon. I'm not sure if I told her I wanted it or what, but yeah, she did get this for me. So thank you. So let's spray this. Ah, uh, instantly takes me right back. Takes me right back to my honeymoon. It is such a good scent, you guys. I don't like, I was, I was um, honeymooning in a very like tropical place. So like to me, this brings me back to that like weather where it was just hot and humid and sunny and beautiful and tropical. But like, that's just because that's where I was when I wore this. I don't know if it necessarily, you know, the, the notes evoke that sort of vibe of being like in a tropical place or something like that. Cause normally when you think of like tropical scents, you think of pineapple or coconut or very fruity, you know, notes. This just has, you know, off the top, it has the grapefruit and the, and the mandarin orange. Um, there's some, there is some pear in the middle, but pear I don't really associate with like tropical but um, just one of the best Chanel fragrances. Oh, I absolutely love it. 
this to me like the the it doesn't change too much from the beginning to the end um it stays pretty much the same i love that sandalwood in the base though this is just one of my favorite fragrances and uh, anytime i wear it i just it reminds me of that time anytime i wear it my husband goes is that the fragrance you wore on our honeymoon? <laughs> so he remembers it as well. And he has his own fragrance that he wore the whole time. So we both have our respective honeymoon fragrances that we don't that we don't wear all the time, but that remind us of our honeymoon. And this one is the one for me. So yes, Chanel Gabrielle, just an amazing, amazing fragrance. You need to give this one a try. It is so, so lovely. Okay, and I did save my favorite fragrance for last, you guys. So this one, unfortunately, is gonna be really hard to find. And I hate to pick, I hate to in include it, but I mean, it is my favorite fragrance, and that is Gucci Envy. Um, I used to have the large bottle, which I went through, and this was years and years and years ago. This, again, was in high school. Um, so now the only one that I was able to find was this small bottle and I've used a little bit of it. I made a small dent in it. I don't want to use this one too much because it is very hard to find and um, the fact that I was even able to find it is for not an exorbitant amount of money. Like it, if you look this one up, you will see. So oh, you guys, I wish they didn't discontinue this. This is one of the best fragrances in my opinion of all time it's so good it is so incredibly good um so let's see so let's go through the accords it's got floral it's described as floral white floral green fresh woody fresh spicy citrus powdery earthy and fruity um so this was uh launched in 1997 it says that it was launched in 1997 and became one of the most interesting products launched by the house of Gucci. I would agree. Um, Envy could be compared to a breeze that brings spring into the city. Its architecture is modern. It denies gaudiness, accentuating minimalism. The composition starts with green notes with a cool metal note that freezes the senses. Gradually, the scent warms up due to woody notes and musk. The metal accord surrounded by a floral bouquet became very popular during the 90s. So the top notes are bergamot, freesia, pineapple, magnolia, and peach. Middle notes of lily of the valley, hyacinth, jasmine, iris, violet, and rose. Base notes of oak moss, jasmine, cedar, musk, and sandalwood. Probably, well, yeah, those are all my favorite base notes. I wouldn't know, I didn't know jasmine was very often in the base notes, but oak, moss, cedar, musk, and sandalwood are my ultimate, uh, just ultimate base notes, you guys. I don't, oh, God. It's so good. I don't want to even want to test it so good, but I will for you guys. Oh. I just, I wish that they didn't discontinue it. I really wish. Oh. Sorry for the noise. I have like three kids playing at my house today. Okay, you guys, I don't know what else to say about this fragrance other than I'm sorry they discontinued it because I wish you could all smell it. Like, I wish you could just go into Nordstrom or wherever and just get a sample. It is the best. It's the best. I have never loved a fragrance as much as I love this one. My husband loves it too. And whenever I wear it, he's like, what is that? It smells so good. So, <clears throat> extremely fresh. But not in like a citrusy way. Like, it does have the top, it does have that bergamot off the top, but I mean, that goes away like pretty quick. It's just such an amazing, amazing fragrance. It is like, it's green, but it's floral green, but it's not too florally. I, like I was saying, I don't like heavy florals. It's just one of the best fragrances I've ever smelled in my entire life. I, uh, if anybody from Gucci is watching, which I highly doubt, but if anybody is, can you please bring this back? Like, please. 
do the world a favor and bring this back. This is just, it's a masterpiece in my opinion. Again, when I wear this, I just feel like I smell incredible. It is just one of the best smelling fragrances. It's so, I don't know how to describe it. Like it's not, like it's not sweet at all. Obviously there was no sweet notes in there. Well, the pineapple is I guess kind of sweet in the peach, but I don't really get pineapple and peach. Like I guess Lily of the Valley I do get, but like I've, I know fragrances that have Lily of the Valley in it. And this one just, it doesn't scream Lily of the Valley to me. I think it's that hyacinth. I don't know what I, else I can say about this. I really don't. It is something that if you can get a sample of, I don't know how, cause I'm not giving mine away. I can tell you that, sorry. This one is staying with me because it is so hard to find. Um, and if anybody knows where to find this, please like share your secrets. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, if anybody else loves this fragrance as much as I do, please let me know because uh, I would love to share in the um, commun communal love for this fragrance. It is just one of, if not the best fragrance I've ever smelled. So that was my last fragrance, you guys. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like I said, this is not my entire collection. These are just like my top favorites that are more on the easy to find, except for that last one category. Uh, they are pretty common, I would say, except for like maybe these two. These probably, cause since they're not, they're, they're rather old, but the rest of them you can easily find. Um, and I wanted to let you guys into my fragrance sort of wardrobe and give you guys a little bit of uh, history just about me and why I picked these fragrances and also just to introduce you to fragrances that I like uh, because I do plan on doing more fragrance videos. I thought this would be a good way to sort of introduce which fragrances I like and if you guys like the same fragrances I do then Hopefully any new fragrances that I come across that I like that I share, maybe you might like them too. So um, also I would love if you could give me some recommendations down below of what some of your fragrances are as um, if you can tell from what I like, maybe um, some of the fragrances you might like or you have that you think I might like, please leave them down below. Um, I plan on doing more fragrance videos. So um, maybe I'll do like a neat, more of like a niche fragrance video for you guys if you're interested. Um, but yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope it was fun. It was definitely fun for me to go through all those and smell them for you guys and try to describe them as best as I could. I know I didn't really do a great job, but, um, hopefully I'll get better. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.